Tonight, the Little River Band returns to the CSRA, this time performing at the Columbia County Performing Arts Center, celebrating almost 50 years of music like Reminiscing, Lonesome Loser, The Night Owl, Help Is On The Way, Cool Change, and so many more tunes. They're showing no signs <clears throat> of slowing down. I talked with lead singer and bassist Wayne Nelson on the band's longevity and a whole new generation of fans. Wayne, we appreciate some spending some time with us here today. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Good to talk with you again. Uh, good to see you, too. Uh, and, and honestly, looking forward to the big show June 29th at the Columbia County Performing Arts Center. Uh, good to have you back in the CSRA. Before we get to the band, and this is something I've actually always wanted to ask you, take us back to your beginnings uh, and music. Was bass your first instrument of choice? Uh, it was. Uh, I... It was instilled in me <clears throat> when I was a kid. My parents were in the choir and community theater. Um, Dad was in the bass section and was a actually a drum major uh, in college. So there was always percussion and so on around going on around me. But well, I was a boy soprano, but they didn't have anywhere to put me. So I put on a, a, a short robe and stood with the guys singing bass, but two octaves up, two or three octaves up. But the bass part, the, just the feeling of it, uh, was coming up through the floor for me. So um, in high school, there was a band being put together. Um, they, everybody needs a singer, but I had never played an instrument before. But when we were rehearsing, I kept telling the bass player, I think the part, I think there's different notes there. I think this part goes like this. Drummer comes to me and he says, if you can sing lead and you can play bass at the same time, we're going to be able to get rid of two people and make more money. <laughs> so <laughs> okay. that was... That was my auspicious beginnings as a bass player. And the rest, as they say, is history. Uh, you joined Little River Band in 1980. Uh, it has been an amazing 44 years uh, in the studio, part of 22 Little River Band albums, and you're consistently touring. Uh, your site right now shows dates through the end of the year. How many shows do you guys do a year? Uh, we just passed 82 this year, so we're kind of out almost every weekend for at least one show sometimes two, sometimes three. This, this week we're out for three uh, up in Wisconsin, Minnesota. But um, it's a steady, steady progression. Um, we literally have to block off a couple of weeks just for sanity, um, you know, anniversaries or, or just, look, we, we're doing 19 weeks in a row. We, we need to block out a weekend. Great problem to have. I'm not complaining. I'm just saying that's the way it's going this year. I and and as four years, as a matter of fact. I've, I've talked to so many artists and bands that said they, they loved having a problem like that, especially post-COVID, where no one was able to tour, nobody was able to do anything like that. So great to have you back out on the road. Uh, the late Glenn Fry from the Eagles said, Little River Band was the best singing band in the world, which obviously is high praise coming from a guy who was also in a five-part harmony rock band. Was that just something that came naturally for the band? It's uh, y yes. The, 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 whenever there's some, whenever there's a lineup change or somebody wants to, you know, the family reasons, travel, whatever, they, they decide to leave. The prime requisite is for somebody to bring something new to the band at the instrument they play, but also be able to contribute to the vocals. Um, so there's a there's a mix of personality, um, playing talent, but also singing talent. Because having five part, having five guys sing those parts just kind of knocks people back. They're like, you, you know, you can turn everything up, but you can't get that power from five voices doing a, a, a song. Right. It's just, it's magic and people love it. So it's always been part of our, you know, our game plan that if we were gonna replace somebody or had to, that they had to bring a voice as well. In addition to all the constant touring that you do, the band does a number of supportive concerts for charities like Habitat for Humanity, Children's Hospitals and more. That's that's something that's important to you guys, isn't it? Very. Um, uh, over the our, our gratitude for being supported by by people is uh, immense, and to be able to give something back to a, a, a pocket of people that need it. Um, there's a there's a recurring one up in Iowa when it turns cold up in northern Iowa. Uh, we know a woman who runs four shelters: uh, men, women, veterans, and uh, young teens that are all, you know, hard up and, and looking for a place to stay. That, the, the, the feeling of being able to give back and to hear the stories from the people and what it means to them to have it done with music 
because there's so much emotion attached to that anyway. Right. But it just it it it's something that we we need to do. It it just has to has to be done. I wish more bands would do it on a regular basis, but it's part of our you know it's part of our DNA. Your band is one that continues to pick new fans up and young ones too. I speak from personal experience. My daughter is a huge fan. Uh, so we will definitely be at this show. What's that like seeing uh, that diverse age range in the crowds when you're performing? It's incredible. We've been, I started asking this question about two, three years ago. Um, how many people are there for the first time? And it's across the board. It's grandparents all the way down to, you know, young musicians who are kind of like, whoa, look at this. They're singing and playing at the same time and so on. Um, but 75, 80% of the hands go up every single night, even in venues where we played there for four years in a row. The turnover is amazing. To have that many young people in the crowd, it will, first of all, it's job security. Yep, yep. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll get through the 50th year with no problem. But um, uh, <clears throat> we set a course this year with a brand new record called Window to the World. You'll hear a couple of the new songs uh, in the set uh, on the 29th. But the the wonderful thing about that is that there is a whole set of ears out there who might know the history. They might know the old songs if they heard them, but they don't connect the name and so on and so forth. So we've actually decided to do social media uh, and not be dinosaurs and go speak to those people with some new music that doesn't, you wouldn't necessarily think it was Little River Band. It's got a new feel to it, new, uh, new energy. So that that's, all of that combined to get that many people and across the board age range to like Little River Band songs is an amazing feeling, especially on stage when the whole place is standing up and, uh, you know, some of them are in walkers and some of them are jumping up and down in, in Chuck's coming to the front. So it's always fun. Here we are on the cusp of 50 years, the new album out as well, and touring. And uh, we cannot wait to see you and the rest of the guys from Little River Band. Again, happening on June 29th, Columbia County Performing Arts Center. Tickets are available now. You can get them at the box office or at Ticketmaster.com. If I could throw in one extra little treat, th th this is with our seven-piece first chair orchestra playing with us, too. So you're going to see a different level of... Um, emotion and, and class with the Little River Band show. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun. If people haven't seen it, they got to come out. Wayne Nelson, it's a pleasure to talk to you, and we appreciate it. My pleasure, man. Good to talk to you.